Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Midlife Crisis with your hosts, Ashley and Tracy. Pull up a chair for your seat at the table as we talk about skincare with our special guest today, Paige. Welcome, Paige. Hi, thanks for having me. So good to have you here again. We had you on a previous episode talking about skincare and, you know, protecting yourself during the summer. Mm -hmm. This one's going to be a little more focused around aging. Yeah. Um, Some of the things that you experience as you get into midlife and, you know, menopause and things like that. Um, Your skin changes. Yeah. You know, we've talked about how much hormone imbalance and changes affect your body in general. And it as you probably all know, really affects your skin. (laughs) So Paige is here to tell us how we can take care of ourselves. Yeah. Well, again, thanks for having me. But yeah, aging definitely affects your skin. Um, Like you were saying, a lot of the hormones and stuff change. Estrogen, progesterone, they're all lowering during that time. And Mm -hmm. those are the main hormones that make collagen. And collagen is what pretty much makes your skin look young youthful a lot ala- yeah your elasticity is still there mm-hmm. you hold your moisture retention in better so as those hormones are decreasing it's going to start the sagging the fine lines and wrinkles dryness um a lot of dryness is especially with perimenopause which i know like ashley you were saying when you first went we're going through it you mm-hmm. didn't really know what it was or anything like right. the perimenopause before the menopause right. and that's when a lot of these start to symptoms start to happen because of the hormone changes and so a lot of women I think get confused too because they're like well I'm not going through menopause yet right so why is my skin changing so much yeah but yeah the hormones are the main thing that and then age spots hyperpigmentation there's a lot of that so I just have a lot of facts that I can give you guys and I also have some like product recommendations not specific products but just um, ingredient wise things right. that you should use like a vitamin C serum right. or something yeah. right things okay. like that too that we can talk about well also. and then also I think too you know depending on how well you took care of your skin mm-hmm. when you were younger mm-hmm. a lot of that damage starts to show up yep right so, right yeah. with me of course sun damage yeah well we're we were sun goddesses we were sun goddesses <laughs> and to this day I still don't wear sunscreen at least not on my face uh-huh. because I'm I don't know if I'm allergic to it but I definitely have a reaction to it, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's do. not good. Yeah. Have you tried so. just zinc, like by itself? No, but I've tried a lot of different organic hmm. types of sunscreen, and they just don't work. Yeah. So what I do try to do is wear a hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just protect it. Yeah. yeah. Not look directly up at the sun, but. And there's a lot of like you were saying with you don't like the way. That it feels was doing like the way it feels on your skin or the way it makes your skin look. There's a Reaction. lot of different things. Right. Yeah, no, my eyes would water and swell up, and yeah. my nose would start running. And... and then you can get into the conversation of like chemical versus mineral sunscreen. Right. Right. Those are two different things too. One's for more sensitive skin, but yeah, some people just don't like anything that they try. And as long as you're protecting yeah. yourself from the sun, that's all that right. really matters. Right. Yeah. Or even on my chest. So yeah. It's just mm-hmm. very sensitive areas. But I can wear it on my arms, my legs, and I'm fine. But just. Right. Not, you know, around my orifices, so we yeah. said, right? <laughs> yeah. So for, I went through and did some research on before I came on here just so I could get more accustomed to menopause in general and how it affects the skin. Mm-hmm. And I did learn a lot. And there was a lot of things. There's a type of ingredient called, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, tyrosinase? Tyrosinase? I'm not okay. sure what it is, but it's for hyperpigmentation specifically or age spots. So... That's when the sun in general and aging, both things trigger your melanocytes to produce more melanin, which is what causes the color of your skin. Okay. So at once that's triggered, it'll start overproducing and that comes along with age and being in the sun. Once that's triggered, it never really goes backwards. Your skin's Mm. always going to try and create that hyperpigmentation in those areas. So the tyrosinase tyrosinase I'm not sure how to pronounce that but that ingredient in the skincare is good for hyperpigmentation and good for all skin types so there's a Fitch, they call it a Fitzpatrick scale in aesthetics where it's like 1 to 5 1 is like the palest you can be okay. 5 is like dark skinned that ingredient is good for all skin tones which is actually rare in the aesthetics world because right. a lot of them will like bleach the skin I was just thinking that. Yeah, and that just one just that. works with your skin in general so if you're looking to get rid of some age spots or sun damage that's the ingredient that you should look for because okay. that targets the hyper so if your body is going to 
use it the way it needs to right. based on your skin. It's and that's going good. To, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. so good to know because I do have um, a couple of age spots mm-hmm. that seem to come and go. Yeah. And when they go, it's because I'm trying. <laughs> excuse me, I'm trying to treat them. Right. But my my face right now is you know much darker. So it's. Because not, of the sun. Show right. Much. Yeah, so right. at least I'm not getting, you know, I won't have bleach spots or right. something right. that would be. I was just more saying, looking at myself the other day in the mirror and I was like, wow, when I'm tan, my skin looks so much better. And it's like, yeah, yeah because my dark spots are just blending, blending in with right. my tan. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like everything exactly. looks more even and toned. Right. <laughs> um, another thing that you should start incorporating too, and this is for just dry skin in general. Um, niacinamides and ceramides Mm -hmm. ceramides are help to increase the um barrier function and improve moisture retention whereas the niacinamides help with pore size and texture a lot of those are found in moisturizers right Ah. so but i also take um a pill and i've taken it for hmm. years phytoceramides but i think so it has the ceramides in it right Yeah. yeah um but i take it so and you can actually feel it Plumps you from the outside. I was going to say. From the inside out. With water retention too. So as you age and as you get older, your skin just naturally loses water easier because you're losing those hormones and, or not losing them, but they go down. Decreasing. And so having those products to help you retain the moisture in your skin, which then will help with the plumping and the fullness and the youthful looking or dewy looking skin. And I've taken it for years. I actually just get it off of Amazon. Mm, Um, And it's pretty Do you know what brand it is? Um, No, I don't. But I don't think that it matters. Yeah. Um, But I generally try to look at the ingredients Mm -hmm. um, to see the levels of it. But Um, but the, it also, I think, has like A and D in there. Oh, but nice. it's good for like hair, nails, and skin. Right. Um, and the friends of mine that I have given them some to uh-huh. try, they've all started to use it. And do you notice a, a oh, difference huge. right away? Or well, do you have yeah. to take it for a while? Well, I've been taking it for years now, but if I run out uh-huh. and then start taking it again, you can feel it. Oh, so wow. if you hadn't taken it before mm-hmm. and you started to take it, I would say within the first couple of days, you'll feel it. Wow, but I actually great. have sev- I have super dry skin, and mm-hmm. I always have. Yeah. I don't have patches of oily or anything. It's mm-hmm. just dry, 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 mm-hmm. head to toe. But um, yeah, but I think it's because it has that in there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, another thing that you can do to help with that hydration in your skin too is using a lot of gentle cleansers, especially mm-hmm. if you do normally mm-hmm. run like dry yeah. or you are noticing that for some reason your skin is getting drier. Gentle cleansers with non-active ingredients are the best way to go, especially okay. if you're trying to figure out exactly what's causing it. If it's not new to you or if it's not something that you've had your whole life, um, there are times where you should use active ingredients like post menopause and when you're in menopause. Uh, Retinoids, they say, is really good to use because it's helping um, produce that collagen again in your skin and it's retinoids. an active ingredient. Okay. But to do it sometimes during perimenopause or before could be too rough. Like, uh, I have a friend who um, she's probably like 30 and she just randomly got really dry skin and she was using a retinoid and that caused her to then get breakouts because mm, it was just too much yeah and it was reacting with like the dryness but then mm. over, also making her produce oil in other areas of her face that she didn't use oil and oh, if you wow. so also as you age you lose estrogen and progesterone but you also do the male sex hormones and androgens i think they're called those increase so oh. you could be experiencing dryness at the same time while you're experiencing oiling like excessive oiliness okay. and then the dry skin mixing with the oil that's when you get like pimples and stuff is so you can also, also go through like a breakout stage right again. is that also what increases the hair Facial, <laughs> that's exactly what i was thinking that's because it was yes. yes. it's a oh. male hormone oh yes that's yes yes, yes. Causing i thought you meant the yes. oiliness at yes. first but yes that's 100 percent why like okay. chin hairs oh, things yes. like that yes. mustache yeah yes. it's like beard <laughs> I or had to just have entire <clears throat> face of peach fuzz. Yeah, which is what I get. I yeah. had to have um, full um, facial laser hair. So did I. I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. only 28. But I, I had did to. the dermaplane. Paige does my dermaplane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, I, like, it's kind of crazy, but I think most of my hair growth, I definitely get it everywhere. Mm-hmm. But I get a lot right around my yeah. eyes. Yeah. yeah. When so. I was trying to do um, hormonal treatment, 
I actually had full on sideburns. Oh, it was gosh. crazy. On top of the chin hairs that I mean was almost like a beard. It was just it, mm-hmm. you can't just classify it as like oh a chin. Let hair. me pluck a yeah. Hair. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> massive. But I had years before had laser hair removal. Mm. But when I did it on my face, I only did my mustache. Mm. So I went back and mm. I had my full face done. And knock on wood, although I'm getting chin hairs and mustache again, but they said, you know, they recommend continuing maintenance mm. as you continue yeah. to yeah. age. Yep. You just have to, right? Yeah. But um, but yeah, that facial makes hair sense. was huge. It was yeah. a huge problem. <laughs> Absolutely. And so a lot of things, too, that I was learning while I was doing this research and what I've seen just through schooling and clients and stuff is rosacea and mm. goes hand in hand with aging, which I didn't know. When I was, especially going through esthetician school, I thought rosacea, I mean, you can get it at any age. It's not like it's only when you're older. But the majority of people that experience rosacea do experience it once they hit 40 and up, which correlates with menopause. Which exactly happened to me. And it's so funny that you say that because I never related it Mm -hmm. to what it was probably perimenopause at the time and now menopausal or postmenopausal, but I never had, I had always beautiful skin. Mm -hmm. You know, I might've had a lot of other flaws in most (laughs) other areas, but my skin was always very clear and good. And, but then I started getting Roatia and it was Roatia and I was like, what is happening? And I didn't know why. I was clinically diagnosed with it, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know the tie. Well, I was going to say, I found a fact that said 95% of people with rosacea don't realize they even have it until they're diagnosed with it. Yes. Because there's so many other, they just think, oh, my skin's getting red. Maybe mm-hmm. it's from aging or the heat or things I'm eating or mm. my skin's dry. I'm just going through right. something hormonally. But yeah, 95% of people don't even know that they have wow. it until they're diagnosed with it. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. 450 million people in the world have it and 16 million of those people live in the United States, which I just thought was an interesting Oh, that is an interesting Those fact. are interesting numbers. Is that women or just individuals altogether? I wonder if men also get This it. was for women because it was okay. a, about... Women like, study? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was women. That is... That's... Wow. Yeah. And if it goes untreated for a long periods of time, it can start affecting other parts of your health as, lo- as well as you can't undo it unless you go through surgery. Oh, really? Which would just be like a cosmetic reason. You don't... You would never have to go through surgery as, from far, as far as I know for anything right. medically, right? But if you do let it get to a certain point, then you can only reverse it surgically. Wow. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so what are things we can do to treat it before it gets that bad? So there's a lot of things that you can. Well, there's actually four different types of rosacea, which I also oh. didn't know. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that I either. I didn't know. But okay. There's the f- one that's called something very long. Something with <laughs> erythema rosacea. It's a lot longer than that, but that's the mildest form. And I think that's like when you first start developing it, it's just the redness, um, the like spider web looking mm-hmm. little like bit broken of like blood vessels. Yeah. Almost. Like the, broken yeah. capillaries. Yeah. 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 And that that's well. like rough, dry. It also can get mistaken for psoriasis or eczema. A lot of times mm. some people are just be like, oh, I'm just sense. getting eczema or I'm just getting psoriasis or things like that. Then there's another one called papulopustule rosacea, and this I didn't even know existed, but it's swollen acne. So it's actually Whoa. redness that then gets into like, they're papules, not pustules. So pustules are like the whiteheads, the pus stuff. Okay. Okay. Papules are just like the bumps. Like underneath the skin. Oh, yes, underneath okay. the skin. They're not white. They don't look like you can pop them or anything. Mm-hmm. Pimple-like, but not poppable and you get those mixed in with all the redness okay so when i started i never really had an issue with acne never had it as a kid didn't really start experiencing it until after i had children and i was in my 20s um i would say the the worst part of it was probably in my late 30s -hmm. when i started perimenopause um but it was very mild i never really had an issue with any kind of acne however i will say that as i got into my 40s it was things like that. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what is... What What's happening? I yeah. this? What is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, the first one I ever got was on the side of my nose. And I lit- I have a scar. I literally dug <laughs> to try and pop oh, that thing. Yeah. And now I, it looks like I used to have a nose ring. Because that's I have a little tiny funny. scar there. But I, at that point, I was like, okay, that's not... I need to not do that to yeah. myself. <laughs> right. But it's hard not to. But I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so, of course, it always comes in the hardest yeah, know, places, places to, to get. get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most extreme one is called phimastis, I believe is the, and that's like facial disfiguration, swelling, tenderness, mm. 
um, pain, <clears throat> inflamed acne turns into nodules, which are like the big, just uncomfortable, right. like huge right. like, bumps, yeah. uncomfortable, right. yeah. like cystic acne, but to like an extreme. Um, and actually, scientists still don't know what causes rosacea or how to cure it. So it's something that they are still, it's okay. nothing that can be cured. You can manage it, you okay. can treat it, but you can't cure it. And they're still not sure exactly on what causes it besides the little things that they figured out, but they can't pinpoint it to something specific. So if you do start experiencing it and you start taking care of it mm-hmm. as you're going through menopause, does it does it like kind of die down? Yes. Once, yes. Okay. You can manage okay. it to the point where... Um, like it's not noticeable. You'll still mm-hmm. have like if you were to stop doing whatever you're doing, it's right. going to come back. Right. It's not going to cure it to where you'll never have it again. Mm-hmm. But just keeping the maintenance and the upkeep, you can manage okay. it to where. And it's... then once your body kind of gets through that period of menopause and your postmenopausal, I I assume your hormones find a kind of find a balance. Yep. find a, a right. balance. Yep. And you start to notice that yeah. things are improving. Because yes. I don't okay. feel like mine was mostly like rosy cheeks, mm-hmm. really rosy cheeks. So mm-hmm. at first I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. It wasn't bothering me. But then I would notice. Um, and I also had broken capillaries and mm-hmm. stuff. But I don't notice it as much now. I still have it on my chest mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, but I don't notice it as much now. And when you were mentioning earlier about the facial wash. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that I understand what you were saying about the right kinds to use, Um, but I use Cetaphil products. Mm -hmm. So I use Cetaphil lotion, and then I also use the face wash. Mm -hmm. But what took me a long time to get used to is it doesn't foam, it doesn't lather. So when you said that, I thought in my mind, oh, she's referring to the products that don't lather. Yeah. Because it just took me well, a while. Like, I didn't feel like my face was And that is clean. a lot of the gentle cleansers. Yeah. They're okay. not as... They're, like, a lot of cream, more creamy consistency. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they don't lather, like, the gel ones or the foaming ones that right. get real... Yeah, they don't lather, which is right. something to... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another f- couple things that you can do to... If you do have rosacea or if you're experiencing it, to stay away from is anything like histamine foods. So oh. that, like... Um, mm. The, I think it's the blood, yeah, blood vessels increase and cause vascular damage. So, I mean, there's a ton of things to stay away from. Right. There's like a whole list, but a lot of it is just um, alcohol, citrus, <laughs> all the good all stuff. The good stuff all pretty the good stuff. Which right. also, like, I don't think people should necessarily <clears throat> cut it out completely unless you feel like that's best for you. But just being aware of the things that cause it. Like, and oh, then I trigger it. Right. Yeah. Like, maybe I shouldn't dr- eat this chicken wing that's really really hot if I know that I'm gonna right I mean it's up to you yeah yeah I you know it's funny you say histamines because I am allergic to everything pretty much (laughs) um I've literally had allergy doctors tell me I can't believe you're not allergic to people (laughs) um and so I take I've taken allergy pills my entire life I take a, a, a nasal spray um, I take a Benadryl before I go to bed at night because if I don't, I wake up very stuffy. Oh. Um, so Dina I'm does that as well. constantly taking antihistamines yeah. because I react so much to the histamines around me. Not, that you're not even just foods or beverages, yeah. okay. but just in general, like allergens, you know, which ah. cause a lot of inflammation. That's why I said, like, I'll wake up really stuffy yeah. because right. I'm so inflamed, you know. Do you also and there's take no allergy I can, medicine? Like, I, I do. Zyrtec. I every take day. Allegra okay. every day. Okay. Um, I was on Zyrtec for a long time, and then I started experiencing um, hives, uh, mm. which Allegra is really good for. So right. it's just something I've dealt with my entire life, and I just can't. But it's funny that you say try to cut out you know, the histamines. Yeah. Because I know. I, I'm allergic to everything around me. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Inflammation so. also leads to more water loss in the skin, yes. too. Yeah. So a mixture of all of that stuff is just a lot going on with someone's right. skin. Right. And I would once. assume that hydration, like everything else, is For anybody. something that you want yes. to do that mm-hmm. I am horrible at. Yes. <laughs> the only time I really drink water is when I drink alcohol. Is that funny? <laughs> I too fist it like I'm drinking a, co- a cocktail in one hand and then I have my water, water in the there. other <laughs> hand. But outside of that, I don't drink a lot of if water. If you are experiencing rosacea too... Um, that's when you want to avoid the retinols or inactive ingredients. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Retinols you probably shouldn't use, especially if you're experiencing a flare-up. Okay. And Stimu- for me, for whatever reason, retinol isn't a good... A lot of people, it just doesn't well. work yeah, well. Yeah, there's, like the there's a purging phase two that a lot of people go through when they use retinols or any vitamin A's. And sometimes when they experience the purging, they then get scared and go off of it. And they try it again and they experience the purging all over again. So it is a consistent thing. Mm. But I have noticed with some people... 
um, they just don't work well with their skin. And yeah. maybe it's just like there's tons of people out there that say like put the vitamin A or the retinol on and then do like slug your face. So like put it in Vaseline or like Aquaphor. Oh. So then you're like bury like to put okay. in a barrier. So you put okay. Aquaphor, then you put the retinol and then you put Aquaphor on again. So there's things that you can do, but I have seen for some people it just yeah, it's almost well like the um, sunscreens to me. And mm-hmm. you so have, I have that anyways, reaction so. to it. But um, and I know when I go get my my birthday annual yeah. facials and stuff um, that they put sometimes she'll put it on there. But then I'll leave it on for a little while as long as I can. But then I end up washing it off before too long. So yeah. and just putting on my Cetaphil just to have okay. that moisture. Yeah. But yeah. And then temperatures are something too that also affects mm-hmm. um, cold and hot. Mm-hmm. Extreme on either end can cause. I my flare-ups. face and chest will get really red mine too. in this 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 summer yeah. heat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine too. And it always looks tan, which mm-hmm. is funny, um, or red, yeah. like I'm sunburned. You know, and yeah. I I do notice too sometimes when I drink alcohol. Yeah, that the redness mm-hmm. gets worse. Uh-huh. And then also like ex- over exercising, saunas, hot tubs, anything that makes mm-hmm. your internal body temperature go up could also but I also was reading which I thought is very interesting too a lot of people with rosacea affect it affects their mental health so 100 million rosacea patients are far more likely to have anxiety and depression according to a study in 2022 because it just really affects your day-to-day life and how you feel about yourself it's more than just how it appears on your skin then I didn't realize that yes okay okay yeah okay yeah or just like the way thinking also if you put everything together too with if people are experiencing it when they are going through menopause and I know like your hormones and everything is also a factor in mental health plus now you're physically changing it's all compounded yeah so it's just like a bunch of things Mm -hmm. adding up together which makes sense but when i saw it i was just like yeah that's interesting wow but it definitely makes sense very interesting very interesting had no idea um some good products or ingredients that you could use too for aging and for rosacea is sulfur has a lot of antibacterial and antiviral properties Mm. also inflammatory so it helps with inflammation um Hyaluronic acid is another good uh, one. Um, peptides are really good. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of cleansers with peptides. There's a lot of serums with peptides. That helps um, rebuild the collagen and elastin in your skin. Um, and again, I couldn't do hyaluronic acid mm-hmm. because the same esthetician that had um, referred me to the phytoceramides mm-hmm. also um, referred me to that as well oh. and um, it I didn't react well to it on my skin but yeah. there's actually a pill you can take oh I didn't, I didn't know notice that. the same results yeah. as I did with the phytoceramides so over the years I've kind of phased that out because now I feel like I just take so many pills right um, <laughs> I just phased it out but just for those who might want to try it okay there's an it, oral option mm-hmm, there is yeah. an oral option so interesting if, if it does seem to bother you when you're use it topically I know I mentioned this before but I was talking about active ingredients and Mm. especially with um, aging or just in general the more active ingredients you use the more likely you are to see results so things like I don't know if you guys heard of things like AHAs or BHAs, alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. I've heard of the hydroxy acids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's two different ones and those are both active ingredients and they both help with cell turnover. So as we age, our cells don't replenish themselves the way that they used to. So those Mm -hmm. also help speed up that process along with the peptides like I was talking about for the collagen. Okay. That's good to know. Wow. And don't you do facial massages too? I'm going to take a class in it. I've been okay. looking at this one lady that does it. And yeah, they're called buccal massages. And it's just, well, first of all, for like just cosmetic reasons, the reshaping and forming of the face, I feel like I never really realized how much water retention your face can have. Mm, right. Yeah. When it looks puffy or inflamed when it's just sit- stuff that's just sitting underneath the surface of your skin. So the person that I'm looking at taking the class from, she goes like on the inside of your mouth and like really like massages oh, it wow. but you can see like the blood vessels are all like mm-hmm. she also does this mass that like oxygenates and you can see the blood vessels like pumping again and it's crazy but it helps with um oh my gosh i'm blanking on what it's called right now like lymphatic drainage things oh, like that oh, just to get things yeah. moving and wow. bringing it down when you are doing it, she always says you have to make sure you bring everything back down to your heart because that's okay. where, because if you just like bring it down 
you know, getting rid of it, but it's just good to bring it to your heart because it to I don't pump know. through. Yeah, right. probably. Yeah. yeah. Right. But those are insane. The buccal massages. Yeah. For the benefits and stuff too, especially like I was saying, inflammation, redness in general too, just to get things moving, blood circulation. Mm-hmm. It's really good. That's yeah. amazing. I would be interested in trying that. Yeah, me too. And I me also too. clench my jaw. Oh, in my me sleep, too. Mm-hmm. So I think that that too would really help kind of yes. relax that. Yes. You know? I've, or you can use like um, the gua sha. Mm-hmm. It's like that stone. Yeah. I've been doing that to myself in the mornings or whenever I'm in the shower. And it has been helping a lot with my... Relaxing I grind your my jaw? Te- yeah, I grind okay. my teeth at night too. And I wear a mouth guard, but I still can clench. And so yeah. it just yeah. is painful. There's still tension. Yeah. yeah. And doing that daily really has made a difference in oh. my pain and my jaw too. Okay, I have one and of what's those. that I called? I just don't use it often. Okay, Washa. what's it called? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You can get them from Amazon or anywhere. I like to make mine cold. And then uh, I put like an oh, oil. it feels so good. Yeah, yes. I put an oil on my skin so I have the slip. So I need to so figure nice. out something for my eye bags I didn't I noticed them and it's been a while um and I used to get them every now and then like Mm -hmm. if I was congested or you know Mm -hmm. have a sinus issue or something like that and you guys can probably see my big bags and I think maybe it's more noticeable now because I don't wear any makeup at all yeah um where I used to feel that my um, eye cream that I use mm-hmm. daily or regularly I should say um, used to help but it's not helping anymore mm-hmm. and I didn't notice it so much or maybe I was in denial but it's like last week my granddaughter was over swimming and and my grandson but um, and I had gotten them each goggles right mm-hmm. so they're in the pool like crazy and so she took off her goggles and she had these rings around her Aww. eyes and my daughter-in-law said oh look you look like Nana you have oh, Nana's eyes no. and I was like <laughs> And of course, it takes me a minute, and I wasn't paying attention. But then she said it again, like, "Oh, look, your eyes are like Nana's," oh. and I, and it wasn't even then. It was like hours later after they had gone, and I was relaxing. All of a sudden, like the light bulb went off, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like Aww. they really do look Mine do worse get than worse I thought. Too. I always so. say I have allergy eyes, yeah, because I always have a little bit of dark. Mm-hmm. circle and mm-hmm. it's very common with people that have chronic allergies mm-hmm. right um but i do like when my allergies are worse and i have that inflammation mm-hmm. in my sinus cavity mm-hmm. i do notice a lot more puffiness yeah. and i think it's very common for women that are aging mm-hmm. it just is a fact mm-hmm. yeah. so i would love to ask you to help me find a way to help reduce that yeah. i do have those little eye mask things that you like the gel ones like that you can put, put in your, your in the mm-hmm. freezer yeah yeah and, I have you know put too. it on but i don't really use it um but i would really like to figure out a way to help um, well they do have like eye masks right just yeah. like a face mask yeah but just, but just for, for like eyes. right underneath your eyes oh okay. you could also put that like ashley was saying the eye masks with the eye the cold pet. okay and then i was gonna say if, if you don't put them in the fridge because uh-huh. some you can't because of the ingredients right um i have like a jade roller that i keep in my mm-hmm. freezer oh. and doing that in the morning and it's just like really, marble or yeah. something right okay. and it really Let makes it. a difference for because get one. you should because yeah. it really helps with the the puffiness specifically mm-hmm. of the under well all over your face really and but I under think eyes too, when i've used mine i really feel almost like the circulation got yeah. better or something like i really feel this like vibrance mm-hmm. under like around my eyes when i use it well I'm I so glad I asked because so, yeah it is I, little yeah. things like that that I feel like right away are you going to see the difference now when I've been guilty of so many times doing it and being like no nah, I don't see anything I'm, I'm not, not going to do, do it, it anymore <laughs> but like right. the like with the gua shine too the longer you do it it's like oh wow this actually mm-hmm. does work it just takes some time right but it does work cold specifically I feel like for under eyes too and then a lot of peptides I would Anything with peptides, and I would recommend getting or hyaluronic acid because that helps with the which you can't do, but oh yeah, yeah, but right. well, the peptides. anybody else, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Paige. It's yeah. always a pleasure to have you on our show. Yeah, we learned a lot today. Thank you learned so much. Learned a lot. Thanks for having me. And as we are approaching the summer and the end of our first season coming up, mm-hmm. just want to let everybody know that we'll now be dropping episodes every other week and not every week during the summer so that we can enjoy the summer as we wind <laughs> down our season one. But we'll be back in full swing uh, at the the beginning of fall and that just about wraps it up for today thank you for joining us on let's talk midlife crisis embrace the change
Join the conversation on our website at letstalkmidlifecrisis.com or our Facebook or Instagram and YouTube channels. We'd love to hear from you guys.